when you really take it in, you start to realize that uh, that all of time is just repeating that belief in the original error. So it's just a, a an error that seems to be repeated over and over and over, and that's what makes time. It makes the illusion of time. It makes the illusion of of change. Time is associated with change, but it's always in flux. Everything is changing, shifting. The main distinction, you could say the one distinction that is required to wake up from this dream is just to see the impossibility of change. If the world itself by definition is the belief in change, then you can't really change the change. <laughs> you can only change your mind about the change. What does that even mean? Change your mind about the change. You can, you can see the impossibility of it. That's, that's it. That's what forgiveness is. It, it overlooks because this is actually the answer that solves all seeming problems because the only problem was the belief in change and when you come to this state of mind where you see the impossibility of change then that's it it's a like game over for the ego in fact it shows that there never was a game so this is the joy and the happiness and the lightheartedness. And yet, the ego insists on changing everything. How many versions of the Course are really needed? Well, it's actually the practical application of the, what I'm talking about tonight is what's needed. not coming up with different versions and variations and you know all this craziness of the world oh yeah variety is the spice of life no different strokes for different folks no jesus asked us in the course he says make make this year different by making it all the same so really there's nothing in time and space that you can look at and perceive uh, through the five senses that relates to anything real. That doesn't have anything to do with reality. There's just one reality and that's eternal spirit and there's not multiple realities and there aren't different perceptions of reality because reality is spirit. Reality is eternal and changeless and Perception always changes. When you look at interpersonal relationships, you know, changing interpersonal relationships or what people talk about changing a partner, all of those things are still an attempt to change the change. But, but the change is false by definition. And so you can't change the false. You can just see the false is false. See? See, that's the difference. It's not trying to change the false, but just see the false is false. It's very peaceful. It's very relaxing. Very nurturing. It's quite... Uh, as far as concepts go, forgiveness is the last concept you'll ever need. And it's very, very, very relaxing. 
Another way of saying this is you can't heal what is unreal. So that's why you can't heal the body because the body is just a part of fragmented perception, but the body isn't sick. It's, it's just a piece of the puzzle. And when you see the purpose for the body and for the world is just forgiveness, a very unifying purpose, which unifies all things, then, then is the perception healed. That's what the problem was all along. It was cracked perception. It was fragmented perception. It was distorted perception. When you have a difficulty understanding this, it's because, quite frankly, you still are invested in specifics. You're invested in idols. What does that mean? It can be invested in people, invested in money, invested in companies, invested in a sports team winning, invested in a relationship looking a certain way, uh, invested in the body, thinking the body has some value in and of itself. All the things that people call life on earth, which is not life at all, eternal life is what life is, but all the projections that people call life is basically just, a, again, a devotion, a dedication to, an addiction to the changing. And you can't change the changing. You can only see the impossibility of it. That's where the awakening occurs. It's not in looking to make anything better, looking to improve anything. You won't find enlightenment in ego self-concept goals. When you achieve them, you will notice you are still not satisfied. And that's because they're ephemeral, they're temporal. If you're an eternal being, you will never be satisfied with the ephemeral. It's quite, quite simple. But the ego defense against this realization, the resistance to understanding how simple everything really is, let all things be exactly as they are, and see that everything that happens to me, I ask for and receive as I've asked, the simplicity of that is, is a unified mind. I guess I've given away the mystery. There's really no mystery to it. Enlightenment is, is not mysterious. It's actually the natural state of mind of the Christ. It's the natural alignment with God, being sourced by God, being created, perfect, pure love, eternal spirit by an eternally loving creator. And that's what simplicity is, and that's what waking up is all about. But it's not uh, something that you have to constantly guess at, or it's not something where you're looking to try to cue off of the form to know who you are. That small, still voice within, that inner recognition is what waking up is about. Not about trying to find some evidence in the world to support your identity. As uh, in the Matrix movie, you might remember when they first go into the Matrix, they're driving along the street and Trinity's in the car and Neo and Morpheus and, uh, and they talk, start talking about the, the noodles, this place where uh, uh, Neo had, remembers a memory of having some good noodles and, uh, and uh, basically he's told all those memories that you think happened never happened. And 
he doesn't know what that means. And and basically Trinity there is to is right there in the car to give him the answer. He says that it means the matrix cannot tell you who you are. The world of images cannot tell you who you are. You're not going to find in a bunch of images and idols, you're not going to find the Holy Son of God, pure abstract spirit and love and light in the images. That's why you have to forgive them. You have to forgive the veil. I am one. The Father and I are one. I am one. And all you have to do is open up and embrace the fact of love.